Hello everyone. This is uh, July 3rd, northeast of Atlanta, zone 7. And this is the day I've decided it's time to give the, the sweet potatoes a good fertilizing. And they're going to need some more dirt added to them because it's been settling out. This is one of my small worm tubs. Uh, I grow a lot of worms in here for my fish. And the added benefit is I get a lot of worm castings then that I can use in the garden. So I'm going to have to see what we have here. This is a two section so the bottom collects I can switch them back and forth and as you can see there's just oh, just an assortment of loveliness in here. And it's dripped down through to the bottom so we're going to be now, bear in mind, there's never been worms in this part. This is strictly water, some soil, but mostly it's worm castings that have dissolved in the water and fallen down. Now, we're going to take a bunch of this. Believe it or not, as much as you is considering what this looks like it has absolutely no smell whatsoever absolutely no smell you would think this would smell like it looks but it has there's no odor to it at all so this is going to go outside and it's going to get dumped into a five gallon bucket of water and I'll let it sit for a day and then I'll have a bunch of good worm casting fertilizer liquid fertilizer for the sweet potatoes and I'll probably be able to make enough up because I got a bunch in here that I can use it on other parts of the garden too so now we're going to move outside before I start with the fertilizing I want to walk around and show you how much sweet potatoes are doing this is one of my big blue round tubs here and you see I got a ton of growth coming out Here's the second tub here, and I'm not really sure where the tomato comes from, but uh, we're going to let it go and see what it does. Then we have, here's our third tub, sweet potatoes. These are the three round tubs. Two of the three did really well in the past, and the voles got into one. Well, I've got wire and plastic underneath these guys to keep the voles out. And then here's two of my square containers, rectangular containers. Uh, they hold about 30 gallons, and I got them running there. So the rest of this is uh, different kinds of Thai basil and different kinds of basil. I got another tomato just appeared out of this pot, and some fennel. And then we come over here across with the compost pile, and we come up here with some more sweet potatoes in the round tubs. I got these for five dollars a piece at Aldi's. They just get one batch in and then you never see them again until next year. But it's a great time to buy some tubs. And then here's a tub that's been around for several years and I'm fairly certain this will be the last year since it's really really starting to fall apart. Now I do them in tubs because we have a ton of critters that live down under the ground and they just and they just eat me, eat everything. So, I hear one of the frogs woke up. So then, even with the fact that I got the voles and whatever else underground eats all my, my uh, root crops, sweet potatoes and regular potatoes, down here on the end, we got some purple skin potatoes. The Japanese variety that the skin is purple and I put them in. I put them in about the same time as I did the other ones and as you can tell they're not doing that well. I think it's just plain too hot for them. Uh, just so much heat. A couple of those front tubs have the white skin sweet potatoes which we thought were just outstanding and we'd never had them before. They're expensive so I decided we'd see if we could grow a few. These tomatoes here seem to be doing pretty well. So let's head back up and let me show you how I'm gonna, what I'm going to do with the sweet potatoes. 
And as I pass by, I should point out that here's a couple more sweet potatoes. I think these are white skinned but sweet potatoes here. Uh, so they're going to be needing to get some treatment today, too. Now, what I've got here is a bunch of soil. You can see what it looks like. Because these sweet potatoes, the soil is settled, and there's about six inches of space in each one of these. So I'm going to fill some of that space up uh, after I fertilize them. Now, this is my five-gallon tub that I put one of those containers that had all the worm castings in. This has been sitting for... This one's been sitting for two days, and I'm sure it's ready to use. And once again, it has no smell. I, I really would have thought that the smell would be pretty nasty, but it has no smell. So, I, I know that other people's videos say you need to strain this stuff, then mix it 10 to 1, and, you know, it's just too much work. So, I'm going to take my little container here. Then we're going to walk over and we're going to just put in about half a container into each one of these plants. So that's going to be pretty strong stuff. Got a little bit of left over, give it those pretty flowers back there. going to be pretty strong stuff. Walk around over here. Supposed to be close to a hundred today. But I think the humidity is going to be just about as about the same. It is already a miserable day to be out here. So, there goes that. Now I have to rearrange the camera and stuff to show you the next step. Alright, we've given them their fertilizer. Good strong worm castings. There's some tomatoes coming. Now we're going to start sprinkling in some of this soil. Use the shovel, but I really don't want to damage the foliage, so I'm going to use a scoop. I'm going to build this up some. It's going to give us more room for sweet potatoes, perhaps, but I know it's going to give a good nutrient boost to the sweet potatoes here, and I know it's going to help because this soil will hold some water. Because I'm having to water these every day. And they're just drying out so badly because they are in pots. We're supposed to get some rain maybe this afternoon. That would really be nice. Taking around the plants and whatnot, so it'll settle in real good. Then I'm gonna give this a really good watering that will both dilute the worm dropping castings, dilute that, as well as giving them good water. All right, I'm gonna do the same to those other two up there, and then we'll be back. Alright, now that I got the dirt in, to help fill these pots up, it's time to water all this stuff in. What this does is get that dirt settled down in among the stems and the roots. It waters down all that worm casting fertilizer. 
and it gives the plants a good watering sack. Boy, this is a good win all the way around. And this will keep the plants in good shape here for another couple of weeks. And then I basically, in about a week, two weeks, I'll do the exact same thing all over again. More fertilizer. It might, it might not be uh, worm casting. It might be a dry organic fertilizer. don't know. Depends on what I have at the time. It's going to be a low strength organic fertilizer. I want these guys making lots of sweet potatoes. I get a lot of comments telling me that I really don't have big enough containers for the sweet potatoes. Alright, now on to the next sweet potato. Give him a good drink of this fertilizer tea. Over here to the next one. This one is a white, white meat, Japanese type sweet potato. These are runes from some we bought at the store. Sweet potatoes were really, really good when we bought them, so decided to root a few and plant them. They're not as robust as the regular uh, orange flesh, yellow flesh, whatever standard southern sweet potato. And I still think we'll get something. Have the fertilizer. Uh, just a quick addition, Chris just came over with, uh, we watered the uh, squash yesterday, patty pan have just been unbelievable for us, absolutely unbelievable, understand there are three plants, that's it, and then of course there's always the zucchini that you miss, it's not as bad as missed it two or three times. But there's a quick little squash harvest. Uh, we were thinking maybe they were about done and I'm thinking maybe I'll give them a little worm tea here and maybe they're not done. Maybe we can get one more round. Although I'm not sure what we're going to do with all this. Uh, we've had some bizarre recipes with squash. They were all delicious but you know what do you do when you're getting 10, 12, 15 squash every single day? You turn into a squash. So. Enough for the little squash break, back to the sweet potatoes. Right, sorry, there goes the air conditioner. Heading into the 90s. Not much you can do about the air conditioner. You don't want to turn it off. Put the warm tea in. And then we're going to raise up the soil and bury some more of those stems. And once it gets time, we'll actually make more sweet potatoes off those stems. two more here to do just like that and uh, then we'll come back and see how things are progressing so we'll come back up here to the beginning and I've done them all dirt water fertilizer and you can see they perked right back up plants are just looking great and come over and check these out these are done a little later so they haven't perked up quite as much but they're looking good this is uh, black-eyed Susan's. Uh, it's a wild plant. <laughs> Did not plant that. Here's the squash. Doing extremely well. Then here's two more. Sweet, 
sweet potatoes, turmeric, ginger, some eggplant back there. And then up here is the last of the sweet potatoes. They also got the uh, worm worm casting tea layer dirt on them. These are the purple skinned sweet potatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes with the purple skin. They're definitely the weakest growing ones as far as our temperatures are concerned. But I imagine it's in the 90s already. I know the humidity has got to be close to it because it, it, you can't stop sweating. Heat is just unbearable. So we're going to head for the shower, call it quits. For the day at least outside plenty to do inside so if you like these videos please subscribe hit the like button there's a notification bell will tell you when we're putting up new things as you walk back up the hill there's a squash there's a bunch of squash in here they're hard to see through all the foliage they've grown out in the walkway so can't even mow to keep the walkways clear. Oh. This is David from Grow and Eat This. Uh, maybe tomorrow when it's a little cooler I can do some more. So, thank you for watching.